Let me see if you recognize this. I'm 
for black history because if if you uh, we and we know these scriptures we know them we studied them and then it it says when you look up what scriptures are for black history month then this pops up and then he popped up so uh l- allow me to share this with you it says a prayer in remembrance of black history month this is where i discovered dr cardi carter c woodson As we come, and we're at February 7th, but it reads, as we come to the middle of February, let us be reminded that this month is Black History Month. Black History Month has been celebrated annually since 1926. The month of February was selected by its originator, Dr. Carter C. Woodson, because this month marks the birthdays of two men who greatly influenced the African-American population, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Dr. Woodson was the son of two former slaves and uh, who spent his childhood working in Kentucky coal mines. Now listen to this. He enrolled in high school at the age of 20. He graduated in two years from high school and later earned a PhD. So he was so concerned that the black American population was largely ignored throughout American history that he became an, okay, here the slide is. He began, okay, I'm sorry. He began an initiative to bring national attention to the contributions of black people. So we thank Dr. Woodson for his work and continue to celebrate his vision. Now, let's go on with Dr. Carter. God calls us to oneness, unity, and love. And as the scripture says, we are all children of God in Christ, for there is neither Jew nor Greek, for there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male or female, we are all one in Christ Jesus. And let us call to mind that we are in God's presence as we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, amen. And this is a short prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for being our companion as we journey through a world where there is a great deal of indifference. We thank you for welcoming us just as we are. We pray that you will transform us and make us the people you want us to be. We pray for all these things through Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. That was a short prayer, but it was, um, you know what, really just listen to the words we should th- okay we thank you for being our companion as we're journey he's n- we're never without him okay he never leaves us so uh, you know i always thank the father the son and the holy spirit because they are always with me i can do nothing without them i promise you i can't and uh, sometimes i always say okay it's me lord i'm coming to bother you again it's never a bother um but I thank him for being my companion on my journey. And, and, and it is, as, as it says, through a world where there is a great deal of indifference. We thank you for welcoming us just as we are because I'm coming to you just as I am. You know, my coworkers, your friends, your family, we are who we are. And uh, sometimes people may have their opinions and thoughts and judgments ag- against who we are or, you know, uh, but he doesn't. And so we have to thank him because we, we're coming to him in the raw. When you go to him in prayer, you're just giving all of yourself. He already knows it, of course, but he loves hearing from his children. So when we go to him, we are raw because when you can give of yourself, 
that you can't give to nobody else or share with nobody else and you can share it with your father, it's a relief. It's You release it and you're relieved of that heavy burden. So I thank him that I can come just as I am. And that, I, oh Lord, here's a prayer. We pray that you will transform us and make us the people you want us to be. Sometimes some people, they think they should be who others think they should be, um, you know, or what society says, or, you know, you can't just be your authentic self, who God created you to be. So be who you are. And that's why it says we pray that you will transform us and make us the people you want us to be. So I want to be who God created me to be. Thank God for every uh, every day I wake up. Thank God for every birthday, meaning every year I can see a year's behind me. Not so much that I'm afraid of uh, getting older. It's just that he gives me chances. You know, I have every morning I'm thankful to wake up. Every year I'm thankful that I have a year behind me and I'm a year older. Hopefully I've learned something. Um, but I do want to be transformed. I do want to be pleasing in his sight. And, and in saying all of that and trying to be pleasing in his sight, you may uh, disturb other people. But, oh, well, I'm living at, to give him the glory. And I want to do, I want to please my father. I'm not here to please man. Now, along the way, you know, you hope that you have friendships and that you, you know, uh, can be that person to your friend or to your children or to whoever. You want to be the best that you can be for that human. You do. But it's God that I'm, <laughs> I'm more concerned with him. Not to say I'm not concerned with anyone he's placed in my life because I believe that everyone in my life is a gift of some sort and they add to my life. They add to my learning. So I but I do pray that he'll transform me and all of us to who and what he wants us to be. And then always pray. I don't care what you pray for, how you pray it. It's your intimacy with him. It's your business. But pray all things in the name of Jesus. Because we have to go through Jesus to get to the Father. So you can pray your prayer to, to your daddy. I mean, pray it. And then say, in Jesus' name. I used to always say, okay, it's in Jesus' name. So he's delivering it. He's going to make sure it gets there. You know. So always pray all these things through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now let me share. Okay, now that I've, I've told you a little bit about, let me get into the nitty-gritty of Dr. Carter C. Woodson. Oh, you know what? When he's okay, let me get to the scripture first, because he, that scripture that he read it during the prayer was Galatians the third chapter, Galatians the third chapter, the twenty eighth and twenty ninth verse. And allow me to read it again. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That was Galatians 3, verses 28 and 29. I'm 28. 8 or 10. Okay. Okay. Oh, I have a question. Oh, uh, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, th I love this. You know what I love about this? It's live, and we, we're trying to get it done, okay? So <laughs> I wasn't understanding. Bless her heart. She was trying to whisper and be quiet with it. So bless her heart. I'm over here a little lost. I'm thinking, okay, so it's 8 or 10 what? Minutes before I go on break? 8 or 10 questions? But anyway, I love this because we are live and we're trying to get things done. Okay, so excuse me. The, getting back to the scripture, it was Galatians 3, verses 29 and 28. Okay, now let me share this. Let me please get to the right one. There we go. Okay, but what is, you guys, I am, okay, there we go. I am all over the place. Okay, that's where I want to be. Let's talk about Mr. Carter. Um, 
And see, you know what? I am, they have a C and a G for his middle name. I'm just going to read what I have. Okay. He was born December 19, 1875 in New Canton, Virginia. He died April 3rd, 1950 in Washington, D.C. Woodson was an American historian who first opened the long neglected field of black studies to scholars and popularized the field in schools and colleagues across the United States. Now, there's some questions that were asked and it gives the answer, so I'm going to share some uh, known facts with you. It says, who was Carter Woodson and what is he known for? And you know what, this is the way to learn. I mean, because if you don't, if you didn't know his name, all you have to say is, you know, you can start inquiring, you can Google like, um, who started, who declared Black History Month, or who started this, or, you know, you have questions, you ask it, it'll pop up for you. So, um, they said, what is he known for? Carson Woodson was a scholar who dedications to celebrating the historic contributions of black people led to the establishment of Black History Month, marked ever since February 1976. Okay, keep these dates in mind because it goes further back than this. I'm going to give you the story. As I said, give you the tea. Um, who declared it? Okay, now, here's a good one. Who declared Black History Month was President, President Gerald Ford. The first official observance came February 1976 from President Gerald Ford, whose words established Black History Month in eloquent homage to Woodson and A-S-A-L-H. I didn't know what that stood for, but here we go. I'll get it to you. Um, there's so much information, and I want to read as much as I can. We already got who started it. Oh, here we go. I got it. The A-S-A-L-H. So many letters. Okay, National Black History Month has its origins in 1915. Now, I've seen 1929, too, so i got to get to that. But... The, uh, Come on, listen to it. God bless you, Dr. Carter. Okay, so National Black History Month has its origins in 1915 when historian and author Dr. Carter, it has G, Woodson, founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. This organization is now known as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, A-S-A-L-H. So you see then you notice they changed it from Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, and it is now it's known for the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Okay. All right, now, here we go, Dr. Woodson. Okay, who chose <laughs> who chose February for Black History Month? Woodson chose February for Negro History Month. This is, I'm reading it as it, I'm giving it to you as I read. Woodson chose February for Negro History Week because it had the birthdays of President Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Lincoln was born on February 12th, and Douglas, a former slave who did not know his exact birthday, celebrated his, birth celebrated his birthday on February 14th. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Douglas, a former slave who did not know his exact birthday, celebrated his on February 14th. Okay. Uh, little known history? Okay, I'm not even going to go there. 
There is so much to read. I, I have to get to... Okay, now they're going, who's the richest black person? Mm. Now, now, they're going to keep going back to him. Who is the father? Well, again, it's going to... It's, Okay, okay, it's Carter Woodson. We got it. He and I'm not brushing that off, but um, I'm I was trying to find what date or what why 1929 is sticking with me, but it goes all the way back. And thank God, you know what? When I say thank God, let me tell you why. Because of everything as a people that we have gone through since the beginning of time. It amazes me. I remember as a little girl, and I kid you not, I even think about it from time to time as an adult. And I'm only speaking about the black people because I know other cultures can, maybe they can say the same thing, maybe not. But I used to think, God, after everything that we've gone through, it's amazing that we are still here. I used to think that because it was like everything that... You know, we always say, oh, no, honey, I, I, I wouldn't have done well in slavery time. I would have done this. Uh, no, you wouldn't. Mm, no. I mean, because you're going to fight back. Do, do you, I mean, even during uh, the 50s and 60s, okay. I mean, so many have died. So many have died, and so many have fought for us, and, and some, some names we'll never know. Some names we'll never know. It could have been your your uncle or your aunt or your great uncle, great aunt. It could have been anybody. The names we'll never know who did that fight. Who did, you know? So I don't know. Maybe you would have been that one. I, so let me back up on that. Be, because um, even during now, there are things that we say, I, I wouldn't do that, and you wind up doing it because you have to. You know, some things during those times that we can't even imagine, there are things that they had to endure and accept when they didn't want to either. Yesterday when I was talking about the women of the color purple, it wasn't so much the movie I was talking about, even though the movie is great. I suggest everybody see the movie and then the movie musical. It, it's all good, but I was talking about the different types of women, you know, and then I didn't say, but I thought about it this morning about the mister in our lives or the masses. And um, so when I say, when you think about slavery or when you think about um, before we really did have rights and even when we did have <laughs> rights, we're still mistreated, but um, there's a lot of things that we say, oh, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Be careful what you say. Got to test you on some things. You know, just say, I. you know what, I, I would hope that I would be this type of person in that situation. That's, that's what I try to say now because I don't want to say I, what I would never do. Or I, you, okay, side note, let, let me just keep this one as real with you as I can. And this is with everything in our life. Um, you look at the, you, you, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it along these lines, but about to go off the rail because we as a people need to support one another more and stop talking mess and stop being, stop being in competition. We are such a beautiful people and powerful and smart, you know, um, maybe you didn't go to that college, but you're talented and gifted in so many ways. Why are we, uh, why are we going against each other sometimes? I mean, ugh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not going to be sorry. I, I remember a friend of mine, hey, Jing, um, who said we shouldn't be sorry about things that we need to speak on. Uh, and you know, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I, I, I'm going to speak on it. I, I think we are beautiful people, and together we are powerful. And, and 
you know, a lot of people um, adopt our way. You know, <laughs> okay, somebody's going to get mad today, but that's okay. You'll be all right, I promise. Our hips, our lips, our hair, um, the other people, whether it be white, Hispanic, whatever, have adopted that. People pay, listen, I'm going to say it. People pay for what we have natural. And then to my sisters who are doing extra, listen, for whatever your reasons are, those are your reasons. I am not knocking you down. Go ahead, my beautiful sister. I don't know, maybe because you want to enhance and that makes you feel better, then whatever makes you feel better. Personally speaking, no, I can't, I can't do it. Well, heck, even if I could afford to do so, I wouldn't now. If they say you have to have this to save your life, then yeah, if there's no other way. But this is just not me. But whatever makes you feel better about yourself, um, then go ahead. Go ahead. But, but do your research medically. I'm saying, I'm just trying to tell you, sisters, everybody is looking at us and we're beautiful. We, oh, God, <laughs> we're beautiful people. And a lot of people are looking at, you know, other races are looking for the downfall, I believe, sometimes, you know. And then we need to <laughs> stop knocking down your brother and sister and pick them up, lift them up. We are God's children, okay? And we're each other's brother and sister and should look out for one another. Let's, let's pave the way for our children and grandchildren and, and have them to look up. Oh, I remember my mama it was like this. My daddy was like this. You know, I want to do something like that, you know. I just, I, I do, I, I love the different looks and shades of us. I love the different thoughts. We're not all the same. Um, you may listen to me or my opinion about something may be different than yours, but, but isn't that the, the thing? We're different and we want to learn from each other. We want to leave a mark in the world of some sort, or at least on someone. You know, uh, I'm going off the rails. Let me get back to the black history. I just, it's just, I, we are history. I never thought I would, um, not because I lived such a dangerous life, but I was so excited when I hit 50. I, I just was like, woo, wait a minute. I think everybody is. A lot of people, <laughs> well, I can't speak for everyone, but I've heard some people say at 50, like, oh, God. Now it starts, I'm going downhill, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm going up the hill. <laughs> I'm so happy, you know. So I'm well past 50, of course, but I was excited about it. So be excited about your life, that God gives you the gift of life, that he's brought us this far. We don't have to, we have not had to go through not even half of what our ancestors did. We are to celebrate black history every day of our life. Get that. Every day of our life. Because every day of our life, we are black. <laughs> celebrate you. Celebrate your history. You know, I, I just had this little thought. You see your, your man walking through the door, or your woman walking through the door, just start loving on them. You beautiful black king. You beautiful black queen. Come here and give me some. Give me some of that sugar. I'm just saying this. Just be happy with who you are. And, and just say, Lord, this every day I want to do better. Uh, do better. You know, I want to leave something for my kids. You ain't got to be rich to leave anything. What you want to leave, the first gift that you should give your children is God. Introduce them to Jesus Christ. That's the first gift. Let him know who he is. Give him some of that history and how we endured as a people and how we're still here and we're not going nowhere. I don't know where that came from, people. I was just, uh, well, thank you for bearing with me. 
<laughs> because I am, I'm, I get excited about us, and I, I'm thankful to God for my being. I am so thankful for my being. I know that, you know what, and maybe when, um, I don't even know if they could hear me, but, you know, I'm sure that there are going to be different events and upcoming things that I would love to share with you, you know, because like I said, we're just at the beginning. We're just at February. So, um, you know, and also let me, let me share this with you. On our sister station, WMXV 105.1 FM, at the lunchtime show, um, I've heard them on the air. If you are a uh, first time, like you're the first in this, like uh, Joe Duster, for example, the first fireman here in the Shoals area, okay? He was also born on February 1st, the, the beginning of the month for Black History Month. And the first black doctor is the one who delivered him. So if you're a first in anything, you know, give that. Th I tell you, they have so much fun. They not only have fun on their show, but they're informative. And so if you want, if you're thinking about it today, switch over in the afternoon from 12 to 2 to WMXV 105.1 FM and let them know, hey, a moment in black history. I was the first to do blah, 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 or my mom or dad or my brother, my uncle, you know, my granddad, whoever was the first to do blah, blah, blah. Give them a call. I mean, they're, they're, they're quite entertaining, but they're very informative, and they do speak on local issues. And so um, give them a call if you're a first. Or if you just say, hey, little known black history fact, did you know? Because just like I didn't know who Dr. Carter Woodson was, you know, I'm searching for one thing, and that popped up. So that was my little education for today. So if you if you say, hey, I'm going to look up who was the first black heart surgeon, give them a call. The number is 256-365-1000. And talk to the old, old school preacher, the church secretary, and the choir president. And that's from 12 to 2. 105.1 FM, and then at 5 o'clock is the Drive at 5, the Ain't It Main Show with Montrell and Guest. Um, and it's no telling who they have on, but check him out at 5 o'clock, 105.1 FM, the Music Muscle of the Shoals. And again, that number to call in um, for whatever the topic may be, you can, not only just for Black History, but on the afternoon lunchtime show and the Ain't It Main show at 5 o'clock, if you, whatever topics they have and you have comments on it, feel free to call them, okay, and interact with them, and um, whether it be Black History, a moment in Black History, whether it be whatever their topic is, and you want to, you know, join in on that, give them a call. They'd love to hear from you, Okay. So I had to get a shout out to them. Montrell is the, yeah, Montrell and guests. I, I love each and every one of them. They're quite entertaining, but they, um, they're really about the people and about here in the Shoals area. So give them a call. Also, let me quickly invite you. It is Wednesday night Bible study. I'll jump on that in a minute. Let me get Sunday service out the way because <laughs> I'm tickled about this Bible study today. If you do not have a home church, and again, I will always say this, I will always say this, if you have a home church, please attend your church, okay? Please go to church. Please go to your Bible study. You know, it's not only supporting your, your pastor, but it is also for self. It is for you, you know, to grow your relationship in Christ, to have a better understanding, you know, of a lot of things for your life, how to apply the Word of God to your life how to walk with him, how to not allow things to, because, ooh, please best believe when I tell you, I, I, ugh, if it wasn't for the Lord, <laughs> I promise you. So um, attend your church and attend your Bible study. If you do not have a home church, if you, you know, you, you have your questions and you have, or maybe you just think, oh, look, I know enough. No, listen, no, baby, you don't. No, you don't. Uh, we all every day need some Jesus, and, and we need more understanding on things. So I would urge you, 
If you don't have a, uh, a church home, you're so welcome and invited to Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 23001 County Road 14 in Florence. Our times of Sunday service is 9 o'clock. You're welcome to come in at about 8.30. There will be coffee and juices and water, cinnamon rolls, honey buns, things of that nature. So if you don't have time for breakfast, or even if you have time and you had breakfast and you want to come on out, join us about 8.30. The table is set for you. And then you can go into the sanctuary and just kind of relax and get your mind right, get ready to receive the word of God from the man of God, our pastor, Pastor Michelle T. Knox. And that begins at 9 o'clock. Now, Wednesday night Bible study. Tonight's a little different, a little special, and I'll tell you why. Yes, Bible study... Our feeding starts at 6 o'clock, and Bible study is at 6.30. Don't have any shame in your game. If you're first time coming out, you're going to feel like you've been there every Wednesday because we treat you like family and friends, and it's uh, you, we're going to make sure that you eat and have enough, and um, there's really, it's like a family and friend gathering all the time. So uh, that's at 6 o'clock, and then at 6.30, begins our Bible study. If you still have something on your plate and you're just kind of snacking that, that's your business. Nobody's looking at you or staring at you because we interact, or I'd like to sit there and listen, but they interact with the pastor because he teaches in such a way it brings you to an understanding of what he's saying. You're more than welcome to say, hey, you know what? I, I have a question. Go ahead. It's, it's Bible study. We're there to uh, get ourselves to an understanding of the Word of God. He breaks it down to where you can understand it, but you're more than, uh, um, if you have a question, you can ask it. You know, uh, if you want to wait until after Bible study, that's your business. It's okay. That's what I normally do sometimes. But Bible study is so, I say fun because it's a relaxed atmosphere and you're able to learn. It doesn't feel a classroomy. You don't have people looking at you like, oh, she didn't know that. Well, heck, there's a lot that somebody who's been in the church 25 years didn't know, or they thought they knew. But, you know, when it's broken down and taught to you, then you have a better understanding. So I really do urge Bible study. Uh, if you have a church home, go there and, and get that learning so that on Sundays you do kind of understand what he's preaching about, you know. Um, tonight's a little different because it begins our, our I don't even know what they're calling it, but it's, healthy. We're trying to get healthy. So tonight at 5.30 and please join us. Have, listen, it starts at 5.30, but if you show up at 5.40, just walk yourselves in there. We are beginning to do some stretching exercises, okay? We're going to start off that way. Um, I have no idea the progression, if it's going to be working. I, I don't know, but we've got to begin somewhere. You understand me? So we're trying to get healthy. So at 5.30, Please join us at Galilee, that's 23001 County Road 14 in Florence. Join us at 5.30, and we're going to start our stretching exercises. we got to limber up. we got to start moving. Don't just get up and sit down somewhere, and that's it all day. And the most walking you're going to do is from your job to the car, to the car in the parking lot or a lot of people walk around, they think, oh, I did enough walking at Walmart, I'm good. No, we got to do a little bit more for ourselves, and we got to start eating better and doing better for our temple, and we have to do that. So at 5.30, please join us at Galilee for some stretching exercises. It would be led by uh, Sister Deb, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, <laughs> you know, we all got to start somewhere, so don't, don't judge nobody. You just bring yourselves in there and say, I'm going to do something for self, for myself. I want to get healthy. I want to start stretching a little bit, limbering up the body. Because I tell you, everybody who gets out of bed at a beautiful season to age has a little, you hear them cracks and then you got to, uh, yeah, and pops and... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I thank God for every one of them because I can feel it. That means I'm still here amongst the living, so I'm good. But um, it's, it's going to be fun. And then we go from stretching exercises, and then we're going to have something healthy to eat, and then we're going to a Bible study. It's a beautiful thing because it's mind, body, and soul. It's, you know, it's, 
it's uh, we're starting out with our health, then we're going to eat, that's feeding our physical, and then we're going to be spiritually fed um, at 630. So please join us. It, it's, I'm already laughing because it's already going to be fun. I can just hear the comments in my head. It's going to be fun. So and that's the way it, it really should be. You know, you shouldn't feel like uh, Bible study or, or church or anything should be like it's so heavy or so serious. It is serious in the sense of, listen, if I die tomorrow, listen to me. If I die tomorrow, what did I do with today? You, you understand what I'm saying? What, what impression did I leave on someone? And I'm not talking about the faking and the bacon. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the Lord bless you with this day. What are you going to do with it? How, how are you going to better yourself? How are you going to be? Because when you're good to yourself, you can be good to someone else. You know, that's, that's with the, the mind you know, physically, we, we want to be able to still, p you want to still be able to play with those kids and grandkids. Um, not only, because it's a feel-good feeling, that you feel good, okay? Then you, you can receive things better, you know? Um, you want to make changes in your life. You, you want your relationship with Christ to be better than it was yesterday, yesteryear. So everything plays a part in this, you know, your health, your mental health, your physical health. Spiritually, we want to be healthy, so everything plays a part in that. But what are you going to do with this day that he gave to you as a gift? He looked over you and watched over you and your family all night long. Angels of protection are flying above you. They're walking through your house. They're covering you. Every what are you going to do with the day he's given you? Are you, you not only in treating other people right and respectfully, but being good to yourself. Don't beat yourself up over your past. Don't beat yourself up over your past. We got to let that go. If you've asked for forgiveness and he's forgiven you and you're moving on, don't let those people who use the vocabulary the, uh, the, uh, their vocabulary is different because they still want to talk about the used to be's. The used to be's, if we're going to talk about it, is to say, "Oh, I want to thank God because I used to do. I used to be like, oh, but thank God. The used to's are over. You know, when you're talking to somebody, hey, you know what? I used to do just what you're doing. You know, maybe it's a little different because we're in 2024, but I used to do some of the same things. My little sister, my little brother, you don't need to do that. Let me, let me tell you a different way. Let me tell you how I got out of it. Whatever the case may be, what are we going to do with this day that the Lord has given to us as a gift? If we should die tomorrow, what did we do today? I, I'm not trying to be morbid. I'm just saying that... It's a special day. We, we have our frustrations. God, I had to have a moment of silence. God knows I have frustrations. But I, I try to stay on the positive. Yes, I have to deal with those things that are aggravating me or frustrating me or set, makes me sad or whatever that is. I know I have to deal with that. But again, I can't do anything without um, my Lord and Savior, I can't. I have to go to him and consult him. Father, I need your guidance. Holy Spirit, guide me in the way that I should go. Lord, forgive me for my thoughts, but I'm just so, whatever that situation is. What are we going to do with this day that he's given us as a gift? If tomorrow isn't promised, what are we going to do? That's why every morning when we wake up, we should be, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, my Father. Thank you for protecting me last night and waking me up this morning to try to get it right again. So I did have those six hot dogs, three hamburgers, a double thing of fries, clogging my arteries. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just, look, there's nothing wrong with hot dogs, hamburgers, or fries. I promise you it's not. Everything in moderation. It's nothing wrong with a glass of wine. It's nothing wrong with a beer. It's nothing wrong with, you know, a cognac, a Hennessy, whatever. None of it. Nothing's wrong with any of it. Everything in moderation. You know, it's nothing wrong with that cheesecake and that brownie with nuts. Nothing wrong with it. Everything in moderation. We, we can enjoy ourselves. Because, uh, flipping back to, and I'm still going to stick with what are we doing with this day, but uh, I'm, you, you see where I'm going with this. It's in everything that we do with our bodies, with our minds, with, with our hearts. I'm not just talking about the physical health, but renewing of self, that means mind, renewing of your mind, the way you think about things, you know, the forgiveness that's laying in your heart, but you haven't even, you're not even thinking about that. You know, you want people to forgive you, but are you forgiving to others? It's what we put in ourselves. Again, nothing's wrong with, you know, everything in moderation, whether it be the drinking or the eating or whatever. And I'm not saying, you know, give up everything. Just watch yourself. Did, did yesterday work for you? Okay. Now we're into a new day, new grace, new mercy. New everything. Everything is new. That's why it's a gift, man. The gift that keeps on giving until he calls you home. What are we going to do with this day that the Lord has given us? What mark are we going to leave in history? And even though our names may not be in anybody's book, we will remember you in some way. Don't you still talk about your mom or dad or your grandparents or your great-grands or, you know, um, someone that you've known that is no longer with us? Don't you still talk about them and they make you smile and they bring you a tear but it's of something that made you I remember how I could walk in the house and always smell this you're going to be remembered for something what are you going to do with this day that God has given us as a gift are you going to forgive are you going to forgive yourself are you going to forgive others and and it's not on you if you've made that if you've gone to them you say hey listen I want to talk to you about something you know, this has been going on for a couple of days or this has been going on a couple of years. We need to get past that. Life is too short if we live to be a hundred and perfectly a hundred with your right mind. We have got to, if you want to leave your mark with your kids, one thing is like, uh, you know, maybe your kids can say about you, or I, you know, the best gift they gave me was when they introduced me to Christ. One of the best gifts that they gave me is that they, they wanted me to have a good education, but they never pressured me as far as college. Yes, college was my option, trade school, or become an entrepreneur. But all that required, I mean, you need education. Oh, I remember when my mother told me, and this is true, you love words, and you... you you love writing things down and stuff. She said, she gave me my first pretty journal. And she said, just start journaling. Just start doing this. Just start. So w what are you going to remember? Uh, what you remember about those you've loved and lost. It could be a friend. What mark do you want to leave? What are they going to remember you by? You know, you don't. your name doesn't have to be written in the history books on this earth but it is being written in a book you you come on now our story has been written but have you made some changes in it i mean you know we we have the, those choices that we can make <sighs> okay my time is i have a couple minutes i had to end it with that i didn't mean to to do that so much but I do want to leave you with this remember this is the day that the Lord has made it is a gift so what are we going to do with it I hope and pray that you enjoy this day I hope there's peace and love in your life and that I hope that you enjoy that you will join me tomorrow 8 o'clock in the morning okay you been uh, <laughs> you've been listening to WKAX 1500 the winning worship radio show I wish you love and peace